Okay, today we're going to look at the titration of an unknown acid. I have some lemon juice here and we're going to look at how much citric acid is in there. There are other acids um, like ascorbic acid, but we're going to assume it's all citric acid. We're going to calculate how much citric acid is present in the lemon juice and we're going to do that by titration. Um, what you're going to need is, of course, a burette um, in a burette clamp on a, on a ring stand and a waste container. You need a standard base solution uh, that's known to very high accuracy. This is 1.000 molar sodium hydroxide. You'll also need some phenethylene indicator, a, um, an Erlenmeyer flask, at least 125 milliliters in size, um, a container for your lemon juice, it should be provided to you, some distilled water, a dropper or pipette, and a graduated cylinder. So the first thing I need to do is I need to um, calibrate my, um, my burette and what I've done is I've already conditioned the burette by rinsing it with distilled water a couple of times to clean it out. Then I put my standard base in there, rinsed it around and made it flow through the, um, through the valve here and through the point here to make sure that every bit of liquid that's in here is my standard base. I need to go on and fill this up. So I already have a funnel at the top of my burette and I'm just going to pour my standard base into the burette until I get near the top. Now it doesn't matter if I'm above or below the highest marking because I'm going to drain some out. So now I'm a little above the zero line. I'm going to remove my funnel and I need to make sure that I'm below the zero line and I also don't want any air bubbles in here either so I'm going to tap the burette just a little bit to make sure all the bubbles have come loose because they can affect the volume and now I'm going to open the valve on the pipette and drain it down until I have a, a number that I can read at the top of the burette. Uh, now I've got at the top of the burette, you can't see it well because I don't have the camera up there, but I'm going to hold it here um, and you can see that the water level, you read from the bottom of the meniscus and you can look between the lines and see what it says and my eyes tell me that this is a little past the point two, and I'm going to call that point two six because it's almost to the point two three. You should be able to get the number to within one one hundredth of a milliliter. So I'm going to record that zero point two six milliliters. I need the starting point on the burette so that I can figure out what the ending point is. I also don't want this drop on here, so I'm going to gently touch it to the edge of my waste container to get that drop off because every little bit affects, um, affects what I'm doing here. So now I've, I'm going to remove my waste container. I need 10 milliliters of my lemon juice. So I'm going to start by taking my graduated cylinder and I'm going to pour it close to 10 milliliters. Just eyeball it close because I want to get a very exact amount and I can't do that by pouring very well. Uh, so I'll use my dropper to add it drop by drop until I get to exactly 10 milliliters. One more should do it. There we go. So now I have 10 milliliters of lemon juice. I'm going to pour the 10 milliliters of lemon juice into my Erlenmeyer flask. Now the 10 milliliters of lemon juice at the bottom of the Erlenmeyer flask doesn't look like much, but I want to make sure I got all of my 10 as well. So I'm going to put some distilled water or deionized water, either one will do, about 20 or 25 milliliters into my graduated cylinder and add that to my lemon juice as well. That serves two purposes. It gets all the remaining lemon juice out of the graduated cylinder to make sure I didn't miss any, um, plus it makes the lemon juice in here a little clearer and easier to see. Now a question for you is, does doing that change the amount of acid that's in the Erlenmeyer flask?
it certainly changed the dilution. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add phenothaline solution. I'm going to add three drops of phenothaline solution. One, two, three. Two to four is fine. Three, just right. And I want to swirl that around. That'll make sure the distilled water and the phenothaline are well mixed with the lemon juice. So I'm going to place this under my burette and I'm going to begin by adding a little bit of the standard base to the acid and I see that it immediately turns a little pink so I want to start swirling this and you'll see the pink goes away. Now to see the pink color I'm going to place a sheet of paper under here and that should allow me to see it just a little bit better. Now what I'm going to want to do is open this up and add a little bit and swirl it and I want to do this until the pink color just barely stays and as I get closer when it takes longer for the pink color to go away I'm going to stop putting in um, the base quickly I'm going to slow down and do it drop by drop still going so I'm going to keep adding the base a little faster as long as the pink color goes away I can add it a little faster but once the pink color takes a while to go away I need to slow way down I may have overshot that. Let's wait and see. It really only takes one drop. This is very uh, much more. Uh, this pink color, you should not see this. So I overshot my mark here. But that's why we do three trials. So this is a good way to get an estimate of where it's going to change. If I go back up to the top of my burette and look and see, my measurement here is, I see that as 7 point, um, 7.78. I'm going to call that 7.78. So I'm going to write that down. And when I subtract, I see that I added 7.52 milliliters and that will make my second that will make my second titration more accurate because I'll know when to slow down. Alright so I'm going to start this titration over. Um, I can pour this into my waste container and I need to rinse my flask out or obtain a new Erlenmeyer flask. Now on my previous titration, I overshot the mark, so I'm going to try and do this one just a little bit better because that pink color was very, very bright. So I'm going to take some lemon juice here, add it dropwise until I get to the 10 milliliter mark again. Okay, so I have 10 milliliters. I'll add the 10 milliliters as I did before to my Erlenmeyer flask and add some distilled water to my graduated cylinder. Again, 20 or 25 milliliters is fine. I'll put that in there. It spilled a little, doesn't matter because that's distilled water. And I want to mix that up. I'm going to add three drops of phenothaline solution. One, two, three. Swirl that around and I'll place it back under my um, thing. First thing I want to do is I want to get rid of that drop that's hanging on there. So I'm going to touch that to my waste container and get rid of that drop. Every drop matters. Okay, so I know 
from my previous titration that it took 7.52 milliliters um, to uh, overshoot the mark. So I'm going to assume that 7 more milliliters is when I need to start looking. I'm already at 7.78, so I feel comfortable in draining this down to about 14 or so, swirling it as I go, and I know I'm not going to overshoot the mark if I stop there and then begin adding dropwise. So as you can see, this has all disappeared. Okay. So now I can begin adding dropwise, and I need to swirl as I go. The drops are disappearing, the pink color is disappearing as I go. But it's taking a little bit longer, so I need to be ready to turn off. Here we go. So I got some pink color that didn't go away right away. So I'm going to add just one drop. Swirl that around. That went away. I need a color that persists for at least 30 seconds or so. Oop, two drops. And there it is. Okay. So let's see if that persists. So I almost overshot that mark. This is darker again. I overshot it by one drop. So that's how sensitive it is. Uh, but this pink color that you see um, is actually a little darker uh, than we're looking for. What we really want is a very light shade of pink um, that persists for about 30 seconds. So again, um, overshot by about one drop, and that's all that it takes. If I come up here and I look at my measurement, I see that it is now at about, um, I'm going to call that 14 point nine fourteen point nine eight it's very close to fifteen about as close as I can see with my old eyes fourteen point nine eight if I subtract that from the original seven point five two that was my ending point on my previous titration and uh, that's the beginning point for this titration so what I end up with is 7.46. So I'm within um, about uh, five one hundredths um, uh, or six one hundredths of my previous titration uh, where I overshot. I overshot this one by one drop uh, in this case too. But my total number of milliliters of uh, base, standard base that was added was 7.46 milliliters. I can now figure out the total amount of base that was added by just doing some math. So my starting point for trial two here was 7.52 milliliters. My ending volume was 14.98 milliliters. I subtracted the two and I ended up with a delivered volume of 7.46 milliliters. And this is of 1.000 molar and AOH. So the question is, how many moles did I deliver? Well, 7.46 milliliters divided by 1,000 milliliters per liter gives me 0 0.00746. Liters, and since this was one molar, I have um, one mole per liter, so I can do the math here and say that the number of moles is equal to the molarity times the volume, 
so it's equal to 1.000 moles per liter times the volume 0 0.00746 liters so I ended up delivering 0 0.00746 moles of NaOH so how many moles of hydroxide ions did I deliver? Since there's one hydroxide for every NaOH, I've delivered this many moles of hydroxide. The next math that I can do is figure out how many moles of citric acid there must be. So I know that there are um, three hydrogens in the citric acid and each one of these is going to be canceled out with an OH to make a water HOH or H2O so I should have neutralized one mole of acid for every three moles of NaOH that I delivered so I am in effect dividing this number by three that will give me the moles of citric acid. Next I'll multiply that by the molar mass and that will give me the grams of citric acid. Since my original solution was 10 milliliters of lemon juice, I can figure out how many grams of citric acid there would be in a thousand milliliters, which is one liter.